Viruses are very bad. Flu kills probably something of the order of half a million people a year. HIV still kills something like a million people a year. The COVID-19 virus has killed probably in excess of 10 million people already. And smallpox in the 20th century killed 300 million people. It didn't kill anybody after 1978 because of vaccination. Vaccines are as good as what you put in them. For the flu vaccine, that usually means the circulating strains based on surveillance around the world. And then it takes, you know, six to nine months to start making those vaccines. And by then the virus is mutating and changing. When we're immunized with the spike protein, we make antibodies that can block infection by recognizing the spike protein. However, most of the antibodies that are induced by vaccination targets a certain regions on the spike protein that we refer to as immunodominant epitopes. And these are highly mutating, whereas only a small portion of the response is actually directed against what we call immunosubdominant epitopes. These are what are really important for universal vaccines because these are much more conserved. They don't mutate as much. A universal vaccine is a vaccine that will induce neutralizing antibodies that recognize and latch onto more conserved parts of the surface protein structure. So what one wants to do with universal vaccines is to induce what we call broadly neutralizing antibodies. We have discovered broadly neutralizing antibodies against flu, against HIV, and more recently against SARS-CoV-2. This new wave of vaccine design is incorporating several different high throughput techniques, such as our MPEM technique, where we can map antibodies in real time, because it's not just targeting conserved sites, but it's targeting them correctly. We're at a really exciting moment, I think, for HIV vaccine design. And because the technologies that we're using to try to make an HIV vaccine, we're starting to get evidence that those are good ideas and good technologies. We may be able to use them to try to make a universal flu vaccine or a very broad spectrum coronavirus vaccine. I have a lot of hope that we'll be able to make some big strides in universal vaccine design for influenza viruses and coronaviruses and others, we now have not just the resolution to actually see what's going on, but we also have the capacity to image through a lot of antibodies and assess how the immune system is responding, then iterate on the vaccine and then assess again. One of the great viral strategies is changing shapes, is, is mutation and inducing those sorts of antibodies often requires some special tricks and those are sorts of tricks that we're learning now so increasingly we can think that universal vaccines are feasible.